Good morning and happy Monday and welcome to the AIDS Disease of Building a Real Estate Team. Uh, we hold this on the first and third weeks of every month on Mondays. And this is where you come for everything you ever wanted to know about building the real estate team. If you have one already and you just have questions, so um, if you are currently a single agent and starting to consider building a team, whatever that context is, uh, Rick Jiha will not be with us this morning as he's out door knocking. I love it when I keep him busy. Uh, <laughs> so he's out just knocking doors with his son. Um, he is uh, doing a great job with it really doing a great job with it and having a lot of fun. Um, nothing more exciting than bringing your your actual son into your real estate team and having to build it that way. So uh, good morning, Michelle. Hang on, I got a couple more folks coming in. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Oh, I lost somebody. Yeah, they came in and then they were gone. Okay. Um. Oh, actually, there's Mr. Jiha. Maybe it's pre-door knocking. <laughs> Let's see. I'm like, oh, he's in the car. Good morning, Rick. I didn't know if you were going to join us from the car or not. You're still muted. So if you need to unmute, unmute. Wouldn't miss it for the world. I was like, oh, it's pre-door knocking. Are you headed that way? Yeah. I, no, I wanted to be at my office while we did this car so I could door knock right after. So. Got it. Got it. Got it. Did got you it. hear anything about the flyers or did you already tell Nothing me? Yet. Or, okay. no, I'm still waiting for the little notification telling me that they're finished. Uh, oh, okay. Do you not have any left or are you? No, I have some, but okay. yeah, not enough to get through today though. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I love it when Hi, you- Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Hello Rick. How are you? Pablo. Jesus. Hey, Michelle, good morning, everyone. Amberly, morning, long time no see. I hope I look a little tanner. You do. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're starting to look like another race almost. <laughs> Were you guys in Hawaii, Amberly? Yeah, it was our only week this summer with the kids. They're pretty involved with the high school football program, so they gave us a very narrow window. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we took the kids, all four boys, to Maui for the week, and we had a fantastic time. So we're sorry to miss you and build, but we'll definitely be at the next event. Nice. You'll be at EXP Con? Yes. Nice. Good. Yeah, guys, I highly recommend. The company is really ramping up the events. Um, what they've decided to do, just while we're talking about that, is to do corporation-wise. Now, build is a Brent Gove event. He's ramping up number of events and making them smaller and more intimate. And then the company is fewer and far between. There you are. Oh. Nope, you came back. It's okay. Okay. So like EXPCon will be huge this year because there's not going to be another shareholders next year. So I definitely encourage everybody to be at EXPCon and uh, start looking at, you know, it helps you kind of get ready for 2024. So. Definitely. It was a very, yeah. very good, very good event. And I can't wait for the videos to come out. There's so, so many I want to rewatch. So many. Yeah. 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 So um, what I wanted to just quickly lay out there for us today is generally we like on this call is for you, the people coming to the call to create the agenda, meaning tell us what you need to learn about and we'll talk about it in terms of team building. But what I wanted to say ahead of time today was that we just came back from an event where people are starting to notice that if you're building an organization and that applies to Michelle, Amberly, you know, Pablo, Jesus and Anna, um, if you're building an organization. Having a team is a good way to support both your FLAs and your FLQAs. And so um, with that, we decided that we're going to, you know, want to ramp up making these calls a little bit more effective and, <laughs> people thinking that, you know, there's a lot of people thinking that um, I, I don't necessarily need a call like this and nobody has to get on the call. We're fine. There's been a couple of times <laughs> where I think it was just me and Selena, right? Yep. Yeah. So we had a great meeting. <laughs> yeah. But the main point is that um, I think understanding team structure and team compensation. Now, here's the one thing. I just hung up with the phone with a smart setter call with a compass agent from one of the highest average sale prices in Northern California. 
It's called Los Alto, Los Gatos, California. The average sale price is about 2.4 in that city. And, and she said, I said, how long have you been with Compass? And she said, a year. And I go, oh, really cool. So are you on a team? And she goes, yeah, they force you to be on a team if you're new for the first two years, but I'm also independent. And she said it with a lot of gusto. And I said, oh, so tell me, tell me how that works. And she said, well, I can, I said, so for instance, if your sister wants to buy a house, you don't owe the team anything. She said, no. She said, but I owe Compass a lot. And I said, all right, cool. And then, and then if the team gives you a lead or helps you with something and she goes, yeah, it's accordingly. So then I go, and how, how have you enjoyed your first year in real estate? She goes, well, I'm about to close my ninth transaction. I'm like, what? Nine transactions in your first year in Los Gatos, California. Like I know 20 year veterans that don't do nine deals in Los Gatos because they're, you know, they're doing 30 million on eight deals, you know, or five deals. So, um, so obviously I, my interest in her exploded at that point. And I'm like, well, remember the call isn't to convince you to leave compass. It's to get you to understand what's going on here. I said, for instance, here, it's an 80, 20 to 16 grand. I said, I think that after your first two or maybe three deals, you would have capped. And she said, sounds like it. Sounds like I paid Compass way too much money. So at the end of the call, she agreed to meet with me at the end of this week in person. Uh, the reason I say that is that there's a lot of mis misconceptions about running a team, about the compensation. And yes, you can do whatever you want. And people in EXP do things a little differently sometimes just to help support their FLQAs. Now, I want you to know what I mean by that. Oh, hi, Brent. I didn't see you join. Thanks for jumping on. Oh, and TAPS is on too. All right. So, um, but what that means is maybe if it's normal that we bring on a team member, every deal is 50-50. That's how a team should be. Sometimes the team member only gets 40 and the team gets 60. And you guys might think that's ridiculous, but that's how teams are run. At EXP, people have been bending the rule because they want their FLQA to count. So we want to make sure that now starting now going forward that we start to understand that yes, there can be some give and take so that it works for you in other areas. Um, you know, I don't um, have any of my team members on here, but for instance, we are getting a Zillow Flex account for my team uh, through through another friend in Utah. And, you know, we're, we're bringing a bunch of people that aren't on the team into those calls so that we can start assisting people on my front line to close a transaction. And also it's like a warning to the team members to say, come on guys, if you're not going to step up and sell houses, we're inviting a lot more people to this playground. So anyway, go, uh, I'll shut up now. What do you guys got on your mind? And did that help? This is an interactive call. Yes. It went completely quiet then. So <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to be talking heads on this call for sure, because we're, you know, I, I'm not going to run every call. Like, let me take you from the A to Z on how to build a team, because there's way too much. We coach people literally for years on end on building uh, an appropriate team. But Amberly, you went uh, off mute. Did you have something to say? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Jeff and I, um, you know, for both him and I, a little quick background, we've been pretty much, you know, loan agents running our business for many years. And so for growing a team, that's been something we've really needed some guidance on, um, especially, you know, since coming over to EXP, um, you know, we, we started out slow. So slow and steady definitely, you know, is part of the process too. But what we noticed once we started bringing on board um, a couple more agents, that you know, they definitely start spinning their wheels a little faster. So um, we upgraded our KV core account to the team account, Good. and then and then that way, you know, that we can set rules in there for hey, you know, you you got to respond to these leads that are coming in within a certain amount of time, or it's it opens up to the group. So you know, you, okay. you want to be able to set you. up. Let me interrupt, Amberly, for the sake of yeah. everybody on here, because because of course Selena and I bought the team account also. Tell us what you mean by that, so everybody else here knows. If you buy the team, because because you get the individual for free, you're going to have to pay to have a team account. But tell them about all the great things that happen once you have a team account. 
Yeah, so once you have a key, team account, uh, you're assigned, um, you know, uh, somebody over our KB Core to kind of help get the ball rolling. But more specifically, it gives you more tools to um, have lead routing rules and to get more specific with areas. You know, we, we care, cover a, a big area. We not only care, cover Orange County, surrounding counties, we go all the way up to the Central Coast, Santa Barbara County, and even into uh, San Luis Obispo County, as as far north as we go. So we've got different team members in different geographical areas, which we're able to create for us the most uh, beneficial tool, in my opinion, is the creating uh, those lead routing rules. Um, you know, I'm really there's there's more to it, but the way that I go to is just sometimes it's a little at a time and making sure we're executing those new um, bells and whistles correctly. So. Um, I don't move too fast, but I move slow and steady just to make sure we understand, you know, how to use the system. So for that, you know, it was a $300 a month. You know, it is an investment, but just like anything in real estate, you got to spend money to make money. <laughs> I hope that answered. Did anybody have questions? Maybe I could help answer or attempt to answer about the KB4 team. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. Just the question, and so where are those leads that are feeding into your KB Core coming from? Where are you guys getting your leads? So you can funnel them from Zillow or any out, out you know, other source. Uh, we like to do a lot of property boosts and any other systems within um, your KB Core that you can purchase leads through, you can funnel, funnel them all into the system. But what we've been doing that's been working very well is for all of our listings, we just boost the crap out of them. Uh, and that way we get a ton of calls, whether they want to view that house or whether they want to see something similar in the neighborhood. Um, that's been working very well for us. I love what you sh shared, Amberly, because like a lot of people don't realize the flexibility inside of KV Core with this. And guys, just so that you know, when, when you're setting that, and I'll give you an example. So I used Boomtown um, when I was in New York and we had we had agents and we covered five counties, right? So similar concept when you have team members that are spread out, right? And the ability to set the lead flow to say, well, this person only works in this county, right? We had areas of Westchester. We were primarily Westchester County, but we had one that was Dutchess County and we lovingly called it, you know, lower Canada because um, nobody wanted to go there. And we, but we had agents that did that and it saved so much time when a lead would come in so that it only went to the agents that were willing to work in lower Canada. <laughs> Somebody who was in Westchester County was not willing to work there. So the lead flow was so much more effective as a result of that. And even take it one step further. Let's say you have a newbie agent to the team and you don't want them getting anything over a certain price point because they're just not really qualified to deal with something at that price point yet. You can also set that in and say, okay, I don't want them getting a million dollar lead. They're just really not qualified to handle something like that yet. That's another level that you can put in there and say million dollar leads only go to these three agents because they're really the only three agents qualified to handle it right? You can take it up a notch. Then there's another level that a lot of people don't think about and most people forget about. An agent goes on vacation. They're still in lead flow. They don't answer the lead. They forget about it. And I'm like, Duh! you can turn them on and off because they tell you I'm going to be gone. I try to get them to actually do it. They don't ever, they never, they never remember. By the way, they never remember to turn it off and they never remember to turn it back on. This is why when you have huddles, you make a note and you're like, you're dead to me for the next week. <laughs> okay. And then you make yourself a note to turn them back on because they never remember, but you don't want them getting it because if the lead goes in there and they are gone and they are away and that lead sits for three days and speed to lead is so important, then you've lost that lead. It's gone. All of this is capable as possible inside of team, team KV core. You have the flexibility to make all of that work more effectively for you. And a lot of people don't go that deep into it, but it's so possible to have a lot better control over who you have getting what as a result of their experience or where they live or what they do or how they handle things. Um, usually a newbie for me is going to get a rental lead, a condo, you know, like a, a low end something. Let's let them cut their teeth a little bit before I'm going to let them have something big. Right. Actually, normally when I take a newbie on, they're not even on the flow. 
Okay, normally I let them fish the pond. Everyone here know what that is? Anybody not know what fishing the pond is? It's okay to come off of mute and let me know. Anybody know what a pond is inside of KV Core? When you put the dead leaves into the pond and then they can visit, revisit those. Yep. Yeah, so, but they're not always dead leaves. They're not always they dead. Not just be properly nurtured. Or, yeah. yeah. Could have been that somebody did nothing with them. Could have been that somebody left the team and you, you throw everything into the pond. Okay. So normally what I would do when somebody new, newly licensed comes in, and sometimes it's not even that they're newly licensed. It might just be that they never really did any work and never learned how to lead generate. They are required to fish the pond until they convert to leads. So they're not on any kind of lead flow. I just give them access to the pond and I'm like, go fishing. Come to me when two of them have converted into real buyers. So they, they're just calling. I give them access to the pond and they're like, I'm like, call. They have to call, update the lead with anything that was said. Now they're learning to use KV Core, right? Okay, they made the call. They made the note inside of KV Core. They're setting a follow-up. They're maybe changing what their settings are. Oh, no, I'm not looking in that area anymore. I'm looking in this area. You're teaching them the whole time that they're fishing the pond. And I'm like, keep fishing, keep fishing. And when you actually convert them into someone who says, I want to buy, it doesn't mean right now. They might say, I'm still 30 days out. You might have made the connection to talk to the lender or whatever it is, but they just have to have that contact and have converted them into someone who says, yes, I am willing to buy. Then they get on lead rotation. So if you're not creating ponds and having them fish the pond, you're missing an opportunity. Okay, so it's another thing a lot of people don't use in KV Core that's really, really, really handy when you have a team and you're trying to teach someone. Even if it's someone, guys, who has been experienced and they're really not doing a whole lot and they're like, I don't have any leads. My life is so hard. I wish it was better. Go fish the pond. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot <laughs> out there. Just go fishing. There's a lot in there for anybody who was at build. Was anybody else like, I wanted to like go and adopt that kid who was brand new to real estate. He'd been just started. And he was like, my first two days, I called 1900 people and I converted seven buyers. And I was like, where is he? I want that kid. Will he move to California? <laughs> Can I have him? Guess what he was doing? He was probably fishing a pond. Right. So utilize KV Core in the way in which it was built. If you've only taken the basic training, there's additional training and it goes one step further for team training. And if you're a team leader, there's another level of training. Keep going. Keep taking it. There's a lot of opportunity in there that people are not taking the training for that will teach you to use it better. OK. Anybody else? Interactive. Interactive call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and guys, we don't need to keep you for the whole hour. If you if you've got questions and we can direct you, that's that's what we want to do here, but not just take up a whole hour for no reason. I and, have something I want to bring up, but I'm waiting for the rest of you to. Oh, okay. <laughs> I came ready. So I'm I'm fairly new to this chat, so I'm trying to get a feel for what's going on here. Uh, but I'm sure later on, Rick, I'll have uh, and Selena more questions. Mm -hmm. But I'm liking what I'm seeing here, so. I'll be prepared. Yes. That's right. And this one, Pablo, Will, Taps, you know, Jesus, all of you guys, this is more for your people that you're bringing on to, you know, that you might be bringing on that say they have a real estate sales team and you're wondering if it's working correctly or if it's, you know, we, I cannot even tell you the number of teams that we start to coach and they don't have an organization, so they can't use FLAs or FLQAs as an excuse. And the reason I'm off camera, guys, is you would have guys all fainted from dizziness waiting for me to get on the elevator and get to my desk. But anyway, the um, is, you know, the, uh, what's the splits with your buyer's agent? Say 70 30. I go, you know, and, and they'll go 30% uh, to me, 70% to the agent. That's not profitable, guys. That can't work yeah. unless you're not giving them any value at all then it doesn't work. It's not profitable. Uh, it feels good because there's cash flow, but there's a difference between cash flowing and profitability. So Pablo, as you're recruiting people and they say, I'm going to build a team, getting them on this call will help them start to see what's the proper structure. How do you set up compensation? And then what are the objection handling techniques? If you find somebody that's hungry, humble, smart, and coachable, and they say, oh, I could never work for 50-50, and you go, great. Well, I totally understand that. 
<laughs> is what's most important to you uh, what your split is or is what's most important to you how much money you take home at the end of the year to your family and, and to yourself and your family? And usually they say, well, how much money I take home? I go, yeah, exactly. 100% of nothing is still nothing. We can help you do so much more business than you could possibly do on your own. And it's still not going to work for everybody. Like this lady that I talked to from Compass today, she's definitely the kind of person who would probably want to build a team, not be on a team. So just something for you to pay attention to. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to jump in and share with that. Um, you know, Jeff and I, we have been doing, um, you know, we've been following the Workman Success Systems because, you know, building a team has been something new to us. Um, you know, we, we vary between um, 40, 60, 55, 45, and 50, 50 with our buyer's agents. And that's exactly the conversation that we've been guided to have with them. And it's worked out very well. So, you know, Beautiful thing about how we're structured here at EXP is, you know, some people are a little nervous about joining the team because they think they're going to, you know, make less money. But like what Rick just said, you know, the point of having a buyer's agent come on is to have them do more with a team than they would do on their own. And we've also articulated and communicated to just a couple in particular that are on our group, like, listen, you know, if you're out there hustling and you're, you know, you're generating your own deals not off of us, but on your own. And there comes a point where it makes more financial sense for you to leave the team and go do your own, own thing that we're still going to support them. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get support under our umbrella and they're still going to get support if, hey, they're doing better on their own because we taught them how to fish. You know, that's the goal because nobody wants to feel like they're stuck in a box or they're cornered somewhere or Maybe there's a buyer's agent and they, they want to learn how to become a better listing agent too. So when they communicate with us, that's when we pour into them, right? But they got to show initiative. They got to show that, you know, they're, they're you know, they want to do it. But those conversations have gone really well, um, especially for the buyer's agents we have on our team. Nice. I love that. I love hearing that. Well, through these conversations with Rick and Selena, I dissolved my team. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, That's, I'm sure there's a compliment hidden in there somewhere. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I, I, I dissolved my team. So I feel so good about that. And um, but I'm just now I'm just pushing more to my my line agents because um, I, I have a decent sized org now. So I'm just more focused on uh, nurturing that and helping those uh, my frontline agents flourish so that um, they can uh, uh, do the same for others. But I'm actually entertaining um, the thought of, cause I'm, uh, I'm working on, I'm doing YouTube. So I get, you know, I'm getting clients from YouTube now and uh, I'm taking the clients in, I'm doing the consultation and then I, I think I'm gonna give them out at 30%. Mm -hmm. That's a great number. You're going to mm -hmm. referral fees, you know, guys, if that's not something that you're, you're exploring, you know, it used to be 25%, right? Don't sell yourself short. If you're referring things out and you're, you're giving that to your front line or you're giving that out to anyone else anywhere. Um, you know, especially if you're doing I'm a lot of that work. 70. Yep. Oh, uh, keeping 70. You're keeping they're, they're oh. Yeah. Um, so you're doing know. everything on the front end. Yeah, I've been talking to, uh, there's some guys, uh, Will Grimes and Levi and all those guys that are doing it big on YouTube. They're giving them all out, approved buyers, great buyers for, yeah. you know. Basically, you're you're running a showing assistant program. Yeah. It's very so effective. Will, let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that you're getting your client pre-approved, completely done, and referring that to someone and paying them 30%. Yes, and that way you're eliminating like the whole team and overhead and stuff like that. That's is, am I understanding that correctly? Yep, yep. I have that program, and I just launched uh, a lead program where um, this is this is really cool. I'm super excited about it. But um, I built a CRM on this platform called Go High Level, and then the agents are paying me a hundred bucks a month. I'm pooling their hundred bucks, and I'm running. Facebook ads and they're getting lead after lead after lead after lead and they're working the lead. So I don't care what they do with the lead. Before I cared because I was spending my money and they weren't working the lead. Now it's their lead. They work it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because my my situation is 
I dissolved my team because apparently it wasn't doing really well. And I still have the desire to create a team again, but um, I was having a lot of issues with the, the compensations, right? Which one was the best compensation? 70, 30, 50, 50, you know? And at the end of the day, I felt like I was still the producer even after doing, you know, some of this work. So very quickly, I figured out that it was best to just let everybody go, get back in the groove, understand what I'm doing, and then process. So I still have that desire. Uh, and I haven't contacted you, Rick. Uh, I mean, Leo told me about you and how you mastermind and, and put teams together that, that are very successful. Um, but I, I just decided to just put that on the side right now on the back burner kind of integrate myself again in real estate. I was, um, I was still producing, but last year, my uh, focus was, you know, as president for NARA, um, you know, that took a lot of my time and, you know, I wasn't able to really fulfill my real estate, you know, my business as, as a realtor and in that industry. So, now what I have in mind is, you know, where do I go from this point on? How do I restructure things to where it, I succeed? And I'm listening to, you know, Will's talking about, that's a great idea, right? Um, you know, doing your, because I'm so good at what I do, which is converting leads. Um, but how do I process that? And, and let me ask you this, Will, have you actually closed any of those? And Rick, what do you think about what Will's doing? Maybe you can give me some feedback on that. Oh, yeah. well, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you go first, Will. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So so what I found is, um, you know, nobody wants to be your Robin, right? Nobody wants to work on your your team. They don't want to build your brand. Um, and I don't know if it's just a California thing, but all these agents think that they're rock star agents after they close one deal, you know? Um, so put them in a position where, hey, go ahead and build your own brand. Um but hey, if you want, I have X amount of leads or X amount of clients that I can't handle. You know, I'm willing to pass on, you know, those maybe one a quarter or one a month or whatever, right? Um, but this is going to be the split, right? If you have the time, take it. If not, I'll just pass it on to somebody else. And there's always somebody else that'll, that, that, that'll take it. I'd like to jump in and, and share something again. You know, when, when talking about, you know, building a sales team, you know, um, I feel like obviously, yes, in California, Will, you're saying whether it's just in California, but it just takes time finding the right people. And I think, you know, if I could hit anything home between um, our personal journey, going from just running our own show, running our own business to finding somebody that's hungry, humble, and coachable, right? Because it's really important that, you know, it's it's not easy because I think we're in the day of, you know, we got social media superstars and everybody wants to be that top person super quick and takes the right person that is humble. And I think that's huge to want to learn and, you know, digest it and appreciate the time and energy that you're putting into them. So, you know, it took us a long time to find one person took us almost like a year and a half and you know that's through going through your own hustle and handling your own clients and doing all that so don't give up if, if the, the team is something that you're striving to you know put together just know you know sometimes it's there's it's not overnight success and that you gotta just you know gotta find the right people so I want to uh, encourage you to continue to look for those right people and, um, you know, lead with value and, you know, take it from there one step at a time. I love you for sharing that, Amberly, because it's hard, right? You know, listen, guys, it's, it's easy in the beginning because people will join and they'll say that they're going to do the things, right? Everybody's going to say they're going to do the things. They lie. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> they're not just lying to you. They're lying to themselves. Okay. That's the key. They're not just lying to you. They're lying to themselves. So that higher, slow, and fire fast thing is real. 
And it, like this morning, I was talking to Rick and Casey and Casey was like, what do you have on tap for this week? And I'm like, hey, I have five applicants on the Wise Hire ad I'm running. So I got to go in and look at them, right? And immediately, like it makes me so mad because people from like Chile you know, <laughs> applied. And I was like, at first, Rick, though, I was about to like turn them down. And I was like, wait a minute, we have a UXP in Chile, I think. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to keep that in mind. But I was like, doesn't help me at all for the California team now, does it? Right. So, but I was going in there and you're looking for people, right? That's the first step is that I got them on wise hire. Okay. Then I'm going to make a call. Right. And I have a whole process of interviewing. Lots of people don't make it through the first interview. It's four steps for me, guys, before we even talk about splits, four interviews. I don't even tell them what the splits are until we're on the fourth one. Like we're not even talking about the splits until that one. Okay, and I use the who method. If you haven't read that book, go read it. Go read it. Totally different way of interviewing and find, finding people. And I'm happy we can do it on another call, but I'll share. I have an entire, I built my entire interview process and all the pages that I use when I'm interviewing people and all the questions that came from that book. And that's what I use whenever I do it. And people will say, this is really taking a long time. Like I'm on my third interview with you. I'm like, well, it's kind of important to me that we're a good fit. So if I just rushed into it with you, what does that say about who we're looking for, right? If you are hiring someone because they literally show up on your wise hire ad or your Indeed ad, it's the same thing as having commission breath. I want you to think about that for a second. It's the exact same thing as having commission breath. It's just having agent breath, uh, you know, agent hiring breath. Hang on, I'm going to put this in here for you, uh, the who method. Um, and I'll look up the name of the author in just a second, uh, Amberly. I don't think I have it in my office right now. Um, so the and reason that the takes... author, Dr. Seuss, haha, uh -huh, you're funny, <laughs> you're so funny. Um, the Who Method for Hiring by Jeff Smart. The Who Method for Hiring by Jeff Smart. Hang on, it's a very quick read. Totally different way of hiring, totally different way of doing it. By the way, I know everything about these people. All the questions we're not technically allowed to ask when you're hiring. <laughs> they tell me everything. I know everything about them by the end of the third interview. I know how many kids they have, how many times they've been married, everything about them. And I never ask that question, <laughs> but that you know everything about them. The key is exactly what Amberly said, slow and steady. If you're going into it with like, oh my God, I got somebody, they applied, I'm going to hire them tomorrow. Yay! You probably just hired the wrong person. They're probably not it. Just this morning, I said to Casey, I'm changing the ad. After I went to build, I was like, oh, I need people that are like, yeah, I want to get up and I want to lead generate for two hours and I want to show up for a huddle. And if I don't get anything after two hours of lead generating, I'm going to lead generate for two more hours. I was like, I'm going to change the ad to freaking say that. Like, is, does this describe you? Does this describe you? Are you going to work until you get what you need because that's what you want in your life because you're hungry? That's what I'm going to change on my ad because that's going to attract the kind of people I want. If yeah. if the ad says, would you like to make $100,000 and do you need training and support? You're going to get the kind of person that's going to be like, all they heard was the $100,000 and I need to show up and wait for somebody to hand me a lead. But if you write the ad that says, does this sound like you? Are you hungry? Are you going to work hard? And if you don't get something after two hours, are you going to put in another two hours? Are you going to do what it takes? Are you going to go knock doors? Are you going to hold open houses until like you're sick of the word open houses because you need income and that's how hard you're willing to work? Does that sound like you? That's the person I want to apply for my ad. Go and ask for who you want. Don't put something in there that sounds like you're trying to just draw them in. Literally ask for who you want, and that's who's going to show up, okay? And if it takes three months for the right person, then is it will? are you willing to wait the three months for the right person? Or let me tell you what happens when you hire the wrong person, guys, and I have definitely hired the wrong person many, many times, okay? You spend three months training them, them knocking on your door, freaking wasting your time, showing up on huddles, whining and complaining because they don't have anything. And oh my God, my life is so hard. And it's really, they just suck the life out of you for three months. Whereas you could have spent time with someone who really cared about their profession and cared about doing better in their life. Okay. So 
decide where you want to spend the time with someone that you know that that's what they want or someone who's who lied to you and lied to themselves. Go ahead, Amberly. Yeah. I got a lot of things to say today. It was just, it's a great Monday morning. I love it. I love it. Go to Hawaii more often, lady. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think another big piece to all of this um, is because, you know, I never hired a team or built a team before. And the big aha for me was realizing that um, I had to step up my game too. Like I had to become like a better version of myself to be able to lead and to attract those people that I wanted to my group. And, you know, that's sometimes a tough pill to swallow, you know, like why, why am I not getting any response from this? Why, you know, why am I having trouble teaching this goal? And so just speaking for me personally, is that that's, um, you know, last couple of years just been working on being you know, a better version of myself, investing in myself and learning to level up to um, has also contributed to, you know, bigger steps in the direction where our business want to go. So that's something to be said for that, too. Love that. Wow. Yeah. I'll also add that the wrong person can become a cancer. Like culture is the most important thing when building a team because that one person will tear down everything. Because again, what they say, misery loves company. So they're going to try to get into the heads and ears of everybody else on your team and tell them why this isn't working and, and hopefully you know implant that seed in their mind that this isn't working. So yeah, guard that, guard that with everything. Yeah, a huge agreement on that. People who, by the way, People who show up on huddle, guys, and you have to remember how important this is, people who show up on huddle and talk about everything that they're doing and willing to do and working hard, and then you have someone next to it who maybe shows up once a week on huddle and says, I didn't do anything. No, I didn't hold an open house. No, I didn't door knock. No, I didn't make any calls. What you've got now is someone saying, well, how come we're on the same lead flow? Right? All of a sudden, you've got this little, little bit in their minds going, I don't understand. How come this person who doesn't show up and doesn't do the things is getting the same lead flow that I'm getting? And all of a sudden, that cancer that Will is talking about has started. Okay, so you have to hold them accountable, but you have to hold yourself accountable. So if you say, hey, these are the things you have to do, to be on lead flow. And guys, this is a hard one to do as a leader, right? Because a lot of people, we like to either be liked or respected, like to be liked or respected. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And it's really hard for all of you high eyes out there who like to be liked. I got like a negative 12 eye, I don't care. Um, <laughs> so, but those of you that have high eyes, it's really hard because you're like, but I love you and I'm going to keep giving you things because I believe in you and you're all going to do so great. And then they don't do the things, but you're keeping them on the same lead flow. That person who's doing all the things is like, I don't understand. And now they're like starting to develop some resentment. That's the beginning of the end. It's the beginning of the end. Where did it go? Regret, resentment, revenge? Revenge. Is that it? Yeah. It was well, no, Rick. Yeah. It was resist, resist. yeah, it was, resist, yeah. resistance, resentment, resistance, and revenge. Yeah, I trained on that this morning. Yeah, <laughs> so it's that's why, like, even right now, I mean, I'm looking for these people. I'm looking for people who are are ready to work. Right? You're looking. You're, and it's hard. You're sifting through people who are lying to themselves too. It's okay. They don't realize it yet. They don't realize they're lying to themselves. And, you know, this is going to sound terrible. My favorite people to hire were single moms. You've never seen anybody work so hard in all their lives. Okay, single moms. <laughs> like, just recently going through a divorce. Man, those women. If I could just hire a whole day. I've been one. Okay. I've, <laughs> so I'm, you know, I know. You got to feed like, those babies. You'll do anything. Yeah. Like, we work hard, <laughs> man. We will do anything anything like those are the people are you like that kid that kid who made 1900 calls in two days and, yeah, like and for people yeah and for people who don't know how someone makes 1900 calls i don't know if any of you are asking that that's using a dialer by the way so it's important that you know how someone did that so yeah yeah, yeah they're just loading it in and it's totally doable but it's impressive 
Does any I know, but does anybody here not know about how to do that or understand dialers? Because well, is, is it a three three line dialer? I'm well, sure we, did, a we didn't ask, but I think it would have had to be to do that many calls. So yeah, I would be curious to know how many contacts you actually have from those nineteen thousand. Uh, seven, and he got all seven of. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We know he got seven buyers out of 1,900 yeah. calls, but I would be curious to know how many contacts were made. Mm -hmm. And see, this is why we do daily success habits as teams, right? Because then you get the numbers and you can see what that looks like. And he's probably just going to get better and better at it. And the only way to get good at it is to make 1,900 calls, right? But who was it who said it? Um, oh God, who was it? I'm trying to remember. God, that last week's like a blur. Who said when you go into this when there's no plan B? Yeah. You do this, and that's who you're looking for, guys. You're looking to hire an agent that doesn't have a plan B. Like, well, if this doesn't work out, I'll go and do this other thing. No plan B. This is it. I'm in it 100%. No matter what, I'm making this work. Like, this is my job. I'm showing up for my job every day. These agents who come in and they're like, I and then later I'm going to yoga and then later I'm going to go to Whole Foods. Guys, I don't even walk into a grocery store. That's what Instacart is for. Okay. Like, <laughs> like literally I sit at this desk when I'm not traveling and like, I don't see my family for 13 hours. Okay. That's because I get up and I go to work every day. And what you're looking for is someone who thinks about this business in that way. And especially if they're new. And if you teach them that from the very beginning, this is your job. This is your career. There is no plan B. I'm going to teach you that if you do this this way, you're going to be like this kid who made 1900 calls in two days and got seven. But like, I can't, I want to follow that kid. Like, there's just this part of me that was like, I just want to go like, can I just put like a little Apple air tag on this kid and like follow him around for the next six months? Cause that kid's going to kill it. He wasn't afraid of anything, not afraid of anything. He's going to go places. That's who you're looking for, but you have to be willing to wait for them. Don't go. Will, I mean, we know, we see it. I've been there. And you got to let those people go. And then you've got to say, if I'm going to do it again, no matter what, I'm doing it the right way. No matter what. And maybe it's one at a time. It's got, okay, I got a lead coming in. I'm going to find the right buyer's agent. 100%, I know this person is the right one. I got a lead came, come in and I feel very confident that I'm going to give it to this person because I know they're going to follow up. They're going to do the work it's going to work for me. And that's one. And then all of a sudden you're like, now I've attracted the right person. I'm going to go get two. Now I have two right now. Anybody here ever hire a listing agent to replace themselves? Uh, for a minute I did. Yeah. Yeah. Now for one whole, like that was like a half a minute. Amberly has. <laughs> it's the process of it. So because we work such, um, you know, different areas. I mean, it's about three, three and a half hours to get to uh, our central coast market. Okay. So we brought on board um, a gal that wants to be our listing agent specialist. And she's seen, you know, she knows what she's doing. She's been in the business 15 years. Um, so we're in the process of figuring that out um, because, you know, it, it, there's a lot. I mean, working in Orange County, working up there. Sometimes we can't be in all the places at once, unfortunately. So we're in the process of exploring that right now. But she wants to be on our team, and that's really cool. So I'm like, God, <laughs> yes. So um, I got to review some of my notes. Um, but I, I have to say, none of this would have been possible without hiring a coach. So I do have to say that much. That who's your coach, Amberly? Uh, Randy Cochran. Okay. Okay. I was curious. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I gotta know who it is. <laughs> yeah, so let me tell you, you know, it's, I would have never, we would have never been able to be where we're at now if it wasn't for hiring help. So that's awesome. That is must. Yeah. That's one of the harder hires guys, just so you know, that's one of the harder hires. It's uh, there's a lot of trust. There's a lot of letting go. <laughs> more so it's less hard whenever it's another market or like another spot than it is with like I'm going to step out of being in the business and work on the business and let someone take over um you know I love sharing this because it just did not work out I hired four in New York to replace the person whose team I ran up there none of them worked out not because they weren't good at it because he couldn't let go we hired amazing amazing people 
He just cannot let go. He loves being a listing agent. It works really great for him, but could not, you've got to be willing to let go. And Rick and I know people who've done it like Christy Buck, Rick, like, I mean, kill, you know, yeah. You know, she does say that it was still the hardest thing for her to let go of, right? It's a really hard thing to do. You've been in it for so long, and maybe that defines you for a really long time. But it's, and there is a different compensation structure for that, not a 50 50, not a 45 55, or whatever. And that is a much harder conversation to have, but that's a volume based situation, right? You're looking at someone coming in and having a lower split that they're getting because you're covering all the overhead because the marketing is still all you and you have complete control over that. But it gives them the ability. If you've got somebody who just loves to list, just lets them do it. And they're not doing any of that other stuff, right? They're not carrying a hundred lock boxes and signs and this, you know, and all of these other things. So it's a different kind of conversation. But um, I think, so what I was coming to the conversation with today was about finding those right people and really starting to shift your mindset of feeling rushed to find someone and thinking I'm going to take whoever shows up and instead saying, I'm willing to wait. I'm also willing to write an ad that really speaks to, I'm asking for what I want. And then being willing to wait for that person to show up, really put a description in there. on like, this is what I'm looking for. This is what your day will look like. This is what we're expecting. There's no hiding what the expectations and the level of accountability will be. Put it in the ad. Someone that will speak to, someone will say, wow, this is new for me. I'm jumping into real estate. I really wish I had like a lot of structure and accountability around it. So I know I'm doing it the right way. That's what you want. You want that person who's like, oh, this is new and scary and terrifying. <laughs> and I want someone to tell me exactly how my day is going to go and hold me accountable to it. Because people who leave corporate, I have a husband in the other room who did this left corporate and moved into being an entrepreneur and had no idea how to handle that. You go from being, oh, hey, I have to show up to work at eight o'clock and be on calls and be told what to do and when to be there and all of this stuff to switching gears to an entrepreneurial mindset and wasn't quite sure how to manage that and what that kind of structure and what that day looked like. So give someone exactly what it looks like on the ad and say, this is what we're looking for. This is what we expect. This is what you'll get. Does this sound like you? Call me and be willing to wait for it. It may be a month, maybe three months, but don't waste your time on the people who aren't willing to work. I, I mean, oh, so many of those people. <laughs> like, so many of those people. All right, I'm done talking. What else? What's going on? Jesus, you there? You're quiet today, too. Oh, Michelle, go ahead. So how uh, you say quick to fire, right? So mm -hmm. I have an agent that joined our team and he wanted to be in the office every day. He wanted all of what I wanted and it's not happening. So, you know, originally I said, you have like a 90 day probation period. I may have given it too long. Um, so, you know, how quickly do you, I mean, I, the writing's kind of on the wall. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know how that camera went off. Uh, Michelle, I'm finding, and this was an idea from someone else that three 30 day is better than one 90 day. In other words, you got, you got 30 days. When you get through 30 days, we'll decide if we still want to be together. And if you're okay, we'll go to 30. At the end of 90 days, we have a come to Jesus and we decide, are we really meant to work together? If we don't get to 90 days, then no problem, right? So it's three 30-day ones instead of one, you know. Got it. Yeah. And we've already <clears throat> got a signed contract for the 90s, so I got to commit to that. But that's, yeah, that's fine. But I like that way better. You know, and it's never easy. And this is something, you know, that we talk about all the time that we do have some advantage to being the way that EXP is structured. If they're in your org and in your team, there's always the ability to say it's not the right fit for the team, but you can stay in the org, right? You're still going to get some level of support, but sometimes it's just not the right fit for the team right? There's a different level of accountability whenever they're in a team. Uh, when you're in the organization and you want to do what level of business you want to do, okay, that's up to you. But when you sign up to be on the team, there's a different level. 
right? You've signed up for something completely different. We have responsibilities. We have leads that come in. We have, you know, responsibilities to clients who say that they need our help with buying or selling a home. So if you choose out of creating that level of service, that's up to you. But on this team, this is the level of service and this is what's required to maintain it. So it's hard, right? But it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. And having those check-ins is okay. And if they opt to stay inside of the organization, inside of EXP, then we still offer them a certain level of support, just not, not the kind of support they get with the team, right? A little bit different. There's still something for them, just not the, not the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> you know, not, all, not all the pizzazz. It's hard. People are hard. People think they know what they want. And then whenever the work is required, they don't really know what they want. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And that's why we continue to lead by example. You know, that's why we just keep on up and up, you know, they want to, they want to join us and have fun on this journey, you know, and then um, that's been one thing too, which is Jeff and I just biggest thing with coming over to EXP is we wanted just to lead by example. So that was first with production. Um, and then, you know, like I said, production and then bringing on the team just made the most, most sense for us. Um, nobody likes to chase wild cats, you know, or herding wild cats. <laughs> you can't do that, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's been fun. I mean, listen, you know, if it's not challenging, then, you know, what are you doing it for? So, you know, we're, we're dealing with people in the day to day. We love the people business. Don't we love the people business? So, um, you know, you gotta know what we're signing up for at the, the same time too. Yep. Anybody else? We've got about eight minutes left. Anybody have anything they want to share or ask? No. Well, I would encourage you to read the book. Get the book. Read the book. Um, I shared the website there because apparently there's a course. I didn't know that. Um, I was like, oh, now I think I'm going to go take the course. Um, I love the book. I just think there's a lot of, um, like I said, it's just a different way of thinking about who you're hiring um, and kind of breaking it into, I, like I do my first 15 minute hire uh, interview. I call it speed dating. Um, <laughs> it's 15 minutes. I ask like basically four questions. And I usually know by the end of those four questions, if I'm ever going to set up the next interview like at the end, at the end of the speed dating. Um, and then on the next one, it's very long, very long interview. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm happy to share that with you guys, uh, that, that I've actually hang on. I'm going to screenshot who I have on here so I can send it to you guys. Um, I'll send you my interview sheets, uh, my cheat sheets. I basically took the book and made cheat sheets for all the interview processes. The next one's really long. The third one is really more of a cultural fit to see if you do have team members. I encourage someone on the team to do the third interview. And the fourth one's usually the team leader, right? If you have, if you're at that level of the team and it's like, that's the yay or nay. And like, that's really where we're starting to talk about the splits and deciding um, whether or not we're having that conversation. I usually have them by the third. They don't even care what the splits are anymore. If they've made it to the third interview, they're like, I don't even care what the money is. I don't care. I'm in. Um, <laughs> they made it that far. Um, so it's kind of getting into that level of learning about someone and then learning about what you offer as a team. And if you've got them to the third interview, it doesn't really matter what you say your splits are. They're yours. They've decided at that point that you care so much about learning who they are and what they want that they've decided that they want to be with you. But you have to be willing to spend that kind of time and energy. It's usually like two weeks from the time I get an applicant until the end of that, sometimes three weeks before we finish that whole process. And like I said, some people will be like, oh, this is taking forever. I just want to join a, you know, a team or whatever. I'm like, great. Well, let's make sure we're, we're going to jive. Because if not, like, I, I don't want to waste your time or my time. Like, let's just not go there. I got other things I could be doing in that time. <laughs> Lots of things. Um, so start there, get the book if you can. It's a super easy read. Um, it'll it'll kind of change the way you think about hiring people. Whether, by the way, this is not just for eight, this is not a real estate book. So if you're thinking about hiring an admin, an ISA, whatever that looks like, this is for any of those people, any of those people. So think about it from that perspective. Um, and then I'm glad everybody joined today. It was a good call today. It's a great call. Thank you guys all for committing to this. And really, I mean, we just want to help everybody have what you're looking for and everybody's reasons for being around a team are different. 
we just want to kind of help with that. So. Yep. 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 So our next one is not this coming Monday, but the following Monday, same time, same bat time, same bat place. Um, not what Rick sent out earlier, not 10 a.m. Sorry about that, Pablo and Jesus, who showed up at 10 a.m. <laughs> no, wait, this is the third, right? Oh, are we already on the third? Okay, hang on. Yeah, God, I don't even know what month it is. No, uh, wait, a wait a minute. I think there might be five. Yep, there are. So the next one's on August 7th. Next one's on August 7th. I've done nothing but travel for two straight months. I don't even know. <laughs> Isn't August 7th the activate? <gasps> yeah. So Rick will be on that call. For anybody who's going to be in my activate class will be with me. <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know what activate is, we announced it. We announced it at Build, teaching a two-day class for those agents who need to get a little kick in the pants. It's two days, two days, $49. And that is for agents who need to be out and producing two days of class and 30 days of follow-up with Selena. They have to turn in their daily success habits for 30 days. They have to do huddles for 30 days. They won't do them every day, but it'll be like once every couple of days. And they'll have a community in that class to follow up with on 30, for 30 days as well. But the goal is to get anybody who needs to be in production ASAP into production ASAP. So yes, now, I will be in that class. That, Pardon? It was that email. I'm getting caught up on all my emails today. Yeah, we're going to send out another one this week, though, that'll give you more information on it. So we announced it there. It's on the homepage of empirebuilders.pro if you scroll all the way to the bottom. And it's on our mastery coaching page as well. So there's information on both sides. Um, the launch call is on August 2nd. That's just the information about it. And then, then on the homepage at the very bottom, if they want to go ahead and sign up for the course. And Amberly, it's not just for EXP agents. So if you have a recruit or you have anybody that just needs to get a kick in the pants, <laughs> like that's what it's for. Um, so anybody can sign up. It is company agnostic. So yes, thank you, Michelle, for reminding me of that. It is on my calendar, it's big giant red letters, activate on those days, but Rick will be holding the ACE disease calls for that day for anybody who is not in my class. Yeah, your class is going all day that day, right? So. Yeah, it's, pr it's pretty much six hours both days. All right, got it. Yeah. All what right. time does that start? I kind of put it out to my team this morning on our meeting. I'm probably going to start it at 9 a.m. just to give everybody like a minute to breathe. Um, I'll send out the whole thing this week. Okay. Uh, just make sure everybody's got the times and we were kind of tossing back and forth exactly how long it would last on both days. Casey thinks people will give up if I do it too long. <laughs> she was like, and I was like, they're going to be in it. They're going to, they're not even going to want to leave. They're not going to hang up. They're going to be so engrossed. But we'll The <laughs> August 2nd, uh, just kind of intro call. How long will that yeah, be? That one's only an hour. That's only an hour and it's at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Or less. Yeah. 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 So. Thank you guys. I've got to jump yeah. off and get on another call. Thanks for today. Appreciate Bye. it. Yeah. And if any of you need me, I'll be door knocking. Bye now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put them to work. Put them to work. <laughs>